Hey guys, a very very warm welcome to another session of Sprint X for ICC 10 2021. I am Ankana, your master teacher for social sciences and without the hoping all of you guys are doing absolutely fine and amazing. Today we're going to get started with the judiciary. So let's see what are we, we going to cover under it. As you know, but true, we do not have to do Supreme. I mean, like we do not have to do High Court anymore. So we will be finishing off the Supreme Court in this one session. Before I move on, let's have a quick look at the schedule for all the subjects of your Sprint Text 2021. So this is your schedule for physics, chemistry, math and biology, social science and English. So guys, the whole idea of sharing the schedule with you is so that you do not miss on any of the sessions. You do not miss on any of the information. You know the date and the time when you're going to get that particular video. So stay tuned. And in order to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. Do not forget to hit the like button. Keep those likes coming in and keep sharing the video with your friends. Now let's start the session with the discussion of the previous sessions over question. By whom and on whose advice are the Council of Ministers appointed? But sure, we know that President appoints, but it, he does it on the, he or she does it with the advice, on the advice of Prime Minister of India. Now, Leader Board, this is for the Indian National Movement, Part 3, Aditya Narayan Pradhan, Bhargavi Prakash, Ashok Sharma. I think this is Ulta, so it's a... Uh, Surov, I think. I'm sorry, Bacha. And uh, Ferishizya. Amazing, amazing. Congrats, you guys. Superb job. And you guys have just made me super proud. So, uh, I mean, uh, being on the leaderboard is a task. Yeah? It's not easy. You have to stay sub subscribed. You have to uh, see the video and so the fastest. And yeah, these guys, a lot of them, for example, Bhargavi and uh, Ditya, these guys have appeared before also. So, Consistently doing that is another thing that I want to congratulate you guys on. For the rest of you guys, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and that you're answering in the comment section, not just in the live chat. Now, let's move on with this amazing quotation. The beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you. So this is one thing. One, BB King has said this. That is yours. Your learning, your knowledge, your skill, nobody can snatch away from you. People can fool you, take away your money. People can hurt you, steal things from you, materialistic things. But what's there inside your head and inside you can never be stolen from you. Can, you can never be deprived of it. So no one can ever take it away from you. And that's the beauty of learning. So keep learning, guys. That's your true treasure. So on that note, let's get started with the very first question. What does the Supreme Court of India consists of? It's a one marker question, but it's basically asking in terms of its uh, composition. So the Supreme Court of India, the Supreme Court of India is uh, composed of or consists of a chief justice, right, of India and not more than 33 judges. So there could be up to 33 judges, not more than that. So, which as you can see, this is a one marker question. So, this is enough for you. Around 30 words to 40 words at max. However, one word, one liner answers are also sometimes there because one marker questions are there. Now, in your exam, you may think like how many judges this, that writing and all of that may take two to three minutes. Today, here we are finished within two minutes. Moving on to the next question. What is writ of prohibition? So we know that Supreme Court has multiple writs like habeas corpus, writ of prohibition, etc. Now you have to tell me in the chat box. Now this is your homework question, okay? How many writs does, okay? How many does a writs does Supreme Court have? How many and what are they? That is what you're supposed to tell me in the chat box, in the comment section. Do not, not chat box, in the comment section. Do not forget to put that answer. We will quickly discuss the writ of prohibition. But sure, it is the order issued by Supreme Court to a lower court to stop proceedings in a case in which, uh, which might be in excess of jurisdiction of the lower court. So there's a possibility. Every court has their own jurisdiction, right? Which means every court has their own rights. Now, beyond their rights, okay, beyond their area of rights, something goes beyond it, then 
the superior court can actually put a prohibition and say that this is not under your control you pass this on to me also sometimes when it has a lot of attention on it or when it is of a very high profile i mean like if it is of something something very grave and intense then also they have this right to execute okay so this is writ of prohibition remember guys you have to tell me all the name of the writs uh the number of writs supreme court has uh, ha, uh, supreme court has number of uh, writs ke baad you have to tell me what are these writs and for yourself you have to understand what these writs are you'll tell me the name but you have to also understand the explanation for yourself Moving on to the third question, what do we understand about quo warranto? But your it basically means by what order? It is used when a person has usurped any office. It prevents public officers from forcibly or wrongly holding a high public office. Okay, so that's the idea to check the power of anyone. So that is basically co warranto. Now a quick reminder about the Vedanta Pro subscription, which gives you unlimited live classes with fun and high level learning and quizzes. Quizzes which will give you great exposure to the world throughout the world, right? Then interactive replays with live quizzes and leaderboards are going to be there. Content is going to be premium and with handwritten notes of master teachers and you can download these contents. Now in the session, class teachers, master teachers, both will make sure to resolve all your doubts and assignments and tests will be shared frequently, very often. Every session is followed up with some assignment, which gives you the window to practice it and also check your understanding. And if you feel if not understood something you can always go back to the micro sessions and attend that particular session you don't have to start from the scratch that's the awesomeness of these micro sessions and of course crash courses are also there where we're going covering uh, where we're going to cover all your uh, you know uh, chapters or entire syllabus revisions are going on right now so crash courses are also there but you and all of this is going to be absolutely free for you if you go with Vedantu Pro subscription making less a lot more okay so just make sure to visit the link given in the description box it is also pinned in the comment section you can also go on vdnt.in slash yt pro make sure to use the code ake pro and if you actually do the calculation it's just gonna cost you 11 rupees per session but remember but you that is after applying this code otherwise you will be paying 2700 rupees so 20 percent discount any plan apply the code a k e p r o will give you 20 percent discount do not forget that the link is given in the description box it's also pinned in the comment section and a k e p r o is your code Moving on to the next question, what are the qualifications for the appointment of judge of Supreme Court? But you, there are few things that you have to always remember. Person has to be citizen of India. Okay, that always, always has to be there. Okay, for any government office. Next, they cannot hold office that gives them any kind of profit except for this one especially with the government so these are few things that's always there then there'll always be a criteria for age so all of these things you have to remember see citizen has to be citizen of india judge of high court for five years advocate of high court for at least 10 years and in the opinion of the president he has to be a distinguished jurist so why would someone become such a, i mean like why would someone be appointed at such a high position they have to do, do something exceptionally good so that always has to be there and these are their eligibility criteria moving on to the next question how is the judge of the supreme court appointed we know president does that right so every judge of the supreme court is appointed by the president right so president does it again prime minister has some role to play in it in terms of advice giving okay in consultation with the judges of supreme court and high courts besides the council of ministers so they are there but they also look after i mean like they also speak with the judges of high courts and supreme courts okay now senior most judge of the supreme court is appointed acting chief justice the president appoints him uh, so we also have just like vice president we have something called someone called acting chief justice what, what if chief justice is not there 
puts down his paper of all of a sudden or passes away demise ho jata hai then what do we do we need someone to take in his place because it's such an important role so the president appoints him in case of absence of the support of existing chief justice for whatever reasons reason could be anything but let's say if this person is not there someone needs to be there so acting acting chief justice does that okay so moving on to the next question what are the enforcement of fundamental rights what do we mean by this bachcha this is uh, basically means that any citizen so you know fundamental rights is our basic rights rights as a citizen as a human which is written in the constitution who is the protector of constitution supreme court so any citizen whose right is violated may move to the supreme court for enforcement of rights see there are few cases only few cases in which you directly approach the supreme court but anything which is related to the constitution you directly go and knock the doors of the supreme court now that is why fundamental rights being a very important part of the constitution is also where if it is violated you go and reach out to supreme court directly the supreme court has power to issue orders or writs in the nature of habeas corpus mandamus prohibition quo warranto and certiorari for the enforcement of the functional rights the constitution prohibits the state from making any law which takes away the fundamental rights if it does so the law shall be declared null and void by the supreme court because supreme court is the protector as well as the interpreter of the constitution moving on to the next question explain the original jurisdiction of supreme court so bachcha we know the supreme court has various jurisdictions we have to explain the original jurisdictions okay it basically means the power to hear and determine a dispute in the first instance which means when people directly okay directly reach to supreme court that is their original jurisdiction so we saw in some cases for example writ of prohibition the court case was with the high court or the lower court right similarly a lot of cases are transferred to the supreme court but there are few cases which has to be appealed at directly into the supreme court for example things related to the constitution so all of these things are known as falls under original jurisdiction so center state or inter state disputes between the government of india and one or more states between two or more states between government of india and any state or states on one side or other states on the other side basically any kind of dispute with the center and states now the grouping could be any way okay maybe state and few center uh, center and few states states and states just the center and few other states like that could be there but in all these cases whenever center and state is involved or only states are involved the disputes is directly taken to the supreme court protection of fundamental rights but as i told you anything related to the constitution is also directly taken to the supreme court so any individual can approach the supreme court in case of violation of fundamental rights transfer of cases from lower courts article 130a according to this the supreme court may transfer to itself cases from one or more high courts situation has to be there not just like that not just like that it has to have a valid reason and situation when they take the case right so in case of questions of law or cases of great importance i told you right during the writ of prohibition and some more cases uh, however it's not the writ of prohibition but in some more cases they take up the cases from the lower courts this is the situation which is defined under article 139a and of course interpretation of constitution because it is the sole interpreter so all cases of interpretation of the constitution can be directly filed in uh, filed in supreme court it has exclusive jurisdiction in regard to the question as to constitutional validity of central laws so that is one thing that is kind of special or just restricted to a uh, supreme court okay it is exclusive to supreme court moving on to the next question explain supreme court as the court of record but so whatever happens all the cases everything is actually maintained in form of a record in supreme court right so court of record is a, a court whose judgments are recorded for evidences and testimony and people learn from this this is something to look up to 
okay supreme court does that so the judgments are in the nature of precedent uh, precedents which means the high court and other courts are bound to give a similar decision so they basically set the bar and example and the rest have to follow them okay the supreme court shall be a court of record and shall have all the powers of such a court including the power to punish for contempt uh, of itself the court of order has two implications supreme court judgments and orders are preserved as records this can be produced in any court of precedent and if a person commits a contempt of court the court has the authority to punish him no court can deprive the court of this right okay record not order so this was pretty much about the judiciary with this we have finished today's session now your homework question is what is the meaning of mandamus that is what you are supposed to put in the comment section now let's quickly look at the schedule but yesterday we did the union executive today we have done the judiciary tomorrow we'll be doing the location extent and physical features but you do not forget to take up the vedanta pro subscription i'm telling you it's going to be super super helpful and with that we have come to the end of today's session do not forget to hit the like button stay subscribed to the channel keep sharing the video bachche i've asked you two questions one i've asked you how many writs does supreme court have what are the name of the writs and you have to explain it for yourself and the second question is what do you mean by mandamus that also you're supposed to this is a homework question which you're supposed to put in the comment section Now I'll see you guys in the next session till then stay home stay safe take good care of yourself guys bye bye good night